with my finished objects. So the first thing I have finished is my Mia sweater, which is a pattern by Cheryl Mukhtari, who is Coco More Knitwear. This is a really beautiful raglan sweater with this interesting kind of wider broken rib stitch on the sleeves, down the raglan and on the sides of the body. I made the size, the second size I believe, and I knit this in a wool and angora blend that I bought secondhand at a yarn consignment store in Alameda, close to my parents' house, um, which is in California. So if you're nearby, I would recommend checking it out. They have lots of really great yarn in there. I don't remember the name of it, but I'll put it on the screen for you. Um, but anyway, here it is. Here's my sweater. It has twisted rib details, this kind of folded over knit down collar, which I think I got kind of off on the knitting it down because the ribs are a little slanty. It kind of bothers me a little bit. It's worse on the back, honestly, but I'm just ignoring it because it's fine. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. Um, and then I really like the raglan detailing. I will say this does have quite a deep raglan, not the deepest raglan I own. And I measured it against, I was a little concerned about it as I was knitting that the raglan was going to be too deep, but I measured it against some other sweaters that I have with deeper raglans. And this came up shorter than two of my other raglan sweaters. So it's not uncomfortable. I think the problem with deep raglans is that you just can't like wear anything over it, like a coat or anything. It bunches up under your arms. Um, but this is not too deep to do that. Um, the reason I think that this raglan is so deep is that it's a compound raglan. So you do a different increase rate for part of the raglan than other parts of it. So it kind of slopes at two different rates. I'm not sure that you can really see it um, unless you're really looking for it, but it slopes more steeply and then kind of slopes. A, yeah, it slopes more steeply and then starts to like, it's basically like this. Um, but it makes the fit really nice. I will say this does have a very high neckline and I will put a try on clip here for you to see me wearing it. It does have a very high neckline. Um, so I think this is gonna be more of like a early spring piece for me. I know I just finished it. I have not worn it yet. It's still chilly enough to wear it in Seattle, I would say, at least in the mornings. It's like more of a layering piece. So if I wanted to wear like a t-shirt underneath it and wear it and then wear it in the morning and then take it off in the afternoon, I think that would be fine. Even though it's now June, it's still a chillier time. I think we have a high of 65 today here in Seattle, which is actually decently warm, but in the morning I could definitely wear something that's this heavy. It's like a DK weight. Um, and because it's kind of a denser fabric, it is quite heavy. I didn't weigh it, but I would say it's probably over 400 grams and like it's hefty. You can't see that very well, but it's significant. Like there's some weight to it. Um, but it's not uncomfortable. It has a really nice drape to the fabric. I love the color of it. It's this like interesting purpley gray blue that kind of changes depending on what light you're in. And overall, I'd say I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I liked the pattern. I thought it was really easy to read. I would definitely make more patterns from Cheryl. And I think it's really cute. I did, oh, this is another change that I made. I made the ribbing on the sleeves a little bit longer. I just have this thing where the ribbing on the sleeves and the hem have to be similar depth. Like I do not like it when the ribbing on one is significantly shorter than the other. So I think on this, in the pattern, either the, I think it actually was maybe the body had an even shorter ribbing than what I did, but I did it a couple rows longer just to match the width of the ribbing on the sleeves. I don't know why it's like a symmetry thing for me. They have to kind of balance each other out. Um, I don't like it when there's like a really wide neck cuff and then like super skinny, I, I don't know. I think this one's fine. The neck and the, the balance between the width of the neck and the width of the body, but it's just a thing that I have. So yes, um, I'm really happy with it. I think it's really cute. It's got a good amount of ease without being too oversized. So I don't know, I probably will start wearing this a little bit more once the weather cools back down. And I would honestly say this is gonna be more of like an early spring, like a January, February, March kind of piece for me. Just didn't cast it on quick enough this year, but it's lovely and I would recommend it. It's a good basic raglan. It's maybe like, honestly, it could be a first sweater or it could be like your second sweater because it's a basic raglan with a little bit more to it. Um, but yeah, I like it a lot. It's very pretty and I feel like I knitted it up decently fast. I think I started this in 
late March or early April and finished it mid-May. I think it took me five or six weeks to do. Um, so yes, that's my Mia sweater by Cheryl Mokhtari. Very lovely. I think the yarn suits the pattern really well. So that's finished object number one. Finished object number two is my Sunday sweater by Petite Knit. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out which is the front and which is the back. This is my Sunday sweater, or Sunday shirt, Sunday tee. That's what it's called, the Sunday tee by Petite Knit, which I made in Pearl Soho's linen quill. Um, it's a fingering weight yarn. It's very popular and I really like it. I liked working with it a lot. It's a wool, alpaca, and linen blend. So like maybe not the most summery of fabrics, but again, I live in like a pretty temperate climate. It doesn't get super hot here in the summertime. So I still think I will be able to wear this this is probably actually very good for this time of year because it will keep me a little bit warmer in the chillier mornings, um, but not I won't be overheating in this when it warms up in the afternoon. So yeah, I really enjoyed knitting this pattern. It took me a while. I think I started this in March. Um, so I want to say this took me probably eight weeks to work up because it's knit at a very fine gauge. I think this is a 24 stitch gauge, if I did remember correctly, maybe even more than that, maybe it's 28. I don't know, it's a fingering weight yarn on three millimeter needles. Um, so very fine gauge. Uh, and this is exactly 200 grams of yarn. I only had two skeins of this yarn. The pattern calls for 250 for the size. I did the size three, which is the size I usually do in petite knit patterns. Um, and the pattern called for 250 grams, but I just didn't, Pearl Soho Linen Quill only comes in 200 in 100 gram skeins, and I didn't want to have to buy another third 100 gram skein to finish everything off. So I think I was able to eke out like pretty close to the pattern with just the 200 grams. I think 250 grams is the right amount of yarn for this pattern if you want to knit it exactly as the instructions stipulate. So uh, I'll tell you what modifications I made. The neckline is the same, and the yoke is the same as written in the pattern. Um, all the way down, but I did add some short rows in the back yoke of the pattern underneath the yoke because there are no short rows in this pattern and I just feel like the fit. I've made enough garments to know that I prefer to have short rows in my knitwear. So I just did, you can almost faintly, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I can kind of see it if I'm in the sunshine. There's like the tiniest little bit of rowing out on the back where I did the short rows. So it's probably a wedge just like this much of short rows. I did maybe eight short rows, so four turns, um, just across the back. I didn't even take it across the sleeves because the beginning of the round is under the sleeve and I didn't wanna do short rows over the beginning of the round. I think it would've been fine if I had, but. Um, so it just raises the back neck like maybe a centimeter or two. You can see if I line up the bottom hems and hold it up, it just raises the back neck ever so slightly, like just above this folded hem. But it's enough to make a difference and I'm glad that I added those in. I probably honestly could have added two more and I think I would have liked it a little bit more, but I'm still very happy with it. Um, so I added the short rows and then I just knit the body straight for a long time and, and, and the body's actually probably four centimeters shorter than the pattern recommends. Um, and I did the facings also. So this ha all has folded over hems. I did the facing probably, I think it's supposed to be a two centimeter facing and I did a one centimeter facing. I did it half as long as it's supposed to be, which I think I would have done either way if I had enough yarn or not because I don't like a really wide facing hem. I don't like the look of it. If you look back at people's project photos and they don't look bad, um, but the wider, I just, I don't like the look of the wider folded hem. I think I look, I like it more when it's a bit more narrow. So I think all my facings are maybe a centimeter. They're like five, I think I did five rows and I maybe ran out and only did four on the body, but they're quite narrow. Um, and then for the sleeves, I think they are maybe three centimeters shorter than they're meant to be written in the pattern. And then with the shorter facing as well. So I think if I had bought a third skein of the linen quill, I would have had probably 70 grams of it left over, um, which obviously I didn't want to do because I have no grams of this left over. I have a piece of string maybe this long left over, um, which is the most satisfying thing I feel when you make a project and you use like every last tiny little bit of the yarn. I really appreciate that, <laughs> which is why I think I often end up playing yarn chicken so much is because I would rather 
play yarn chicken and have no yarn left over than buy too much and have a bunch of leftovers. I don't like having leftover yarn. I just don't find it very helpful. So anyway, yeah, that's my Sunday tea. I think it turned out really cute. Um, I think I honestly probably could have knit one size smaller and been perfectly fine with it. Um, but I don't dislike this size. I could have, if I had knit one size smaller, I think I could have gotten it to the proper length, but I don't mind. I think it looks really cute. I like this yarn a lot. I really enjoyed working with the linen quill. I like this like gentle heather that it has. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with this. I think it turned out very cute. I don't know if I would knit another one anytime soon. Like this <laughs> was quite a long process, but I'm happy with it and it'll be a good summer piece. So that is finished object number two. And that's all the knitting finished objects I have to show you. I guess I'll show you my sewing finished project while I'm here. I did sew myself another pair of Persephone pants, which is a pattern by Anna Allen. Um, I've made four pairs of these pants now, uh, and only two of them have survived. <laughs> I had some shrink shrinking issues early on in my sewing career, so this is just my gentle reminder to you to always pre-wash your fabric. Um, but this is, so this is the fourth pair of Persephone pants that I've made. They're a wide leg um, sailor pants, so they don't have a side seam on the outside. Um, and I made this size eight, and I had to make some modifications to make them fit my waist. Um, they're still, and I th feel like this is probably the best fitting pair that I've made so far. They fit very snugly, but without being tight. So they're not like, I, I feel like many women will understand this. You have like standing up jeans and sitting down jeans. <laughs> they are perfectly comfortable to be a sitting down jean. Um, but I, there is still a little bit of puckering in the back that I've noticed the last couple of times I wear, I've worn them that I'm not quite sure how to fix. So I'll think about that. But they turned out really well. I had to end up grading a bunch of fabric out of the back. This is gonna be really hard to show you because it's black. Cotton twill, by the way, this is like a lightweight denim. But do you see here, I had to grade all of this fabric out of the back seam to make it fit properly. And when I do that, when I like make fit modifications, I would rather just keep the fabric in there. Um, and so I just did the top stitching on top of this quite large tab because if I ever need to take the waist out a little bit, like if my body changes and I need these pants to be a little bit bigger, that fabric is there and I can make that change on these pants without having, like I can make that change on these pants. Cause I think if you cut that fabric out and I don't find it bulky at all, by the way, I think if I had, I just would rather have that fabric there knowing that I could let the, these pants out significantly if I ever wanted to. So yes, um, I also got these cool buttons. They're triangular. I found them at my creative reuse thrift store, which is called Bal uh, Seattle Recreative, that I love. Although I didn't realize in it until there's a fourth button as well. I just don't unbutton it. That these two are blue, and the rest of them are black. Um, it's not really noticeable unless you're in like direct sunlight, but yeah. But I think they're really cool. I'd never seen triangular buttons before. Um, they are a little tricky to get through the buttonholes, but they work now. Um, so yeah, that's my Persephone pants by Anna Allen. They're very cute, very easy to style. And this is probably the best pair that I've made so far. So it only took me four tries <laughs> to get a really good fit. So I'm really happy with them. I've worn them already a number of times and I only finished them a couple weeks ago. So yeah, that is my finished sewing project of the month. Um, okay, on to works in progress. I just have one right now because this is a test knit that's due on June 14th and it's fingering weight yarn and it's taking me a little while. So I don't want to cast on anything else and distract myself because I'm at a phase of this project that it's not very like, it's not really holding my interest. And so, but I do need to finish it for the test knit deadline. So I'm not casting on anything else until I finish this so that I can finish it in time for the deadline. Um, I'm working on, this is navy blue, so again, you can't really tell, but I'm working on the Air Tee, which is by uh, Ozetta's new design. Her name is Haley Smedley, but she, her design name is Ozetta. 
I love her patterns. I've made them many times before. I've tested for her before. I made her Salter beanie back in January maybe. Um, but this is her new summer tea design, which I'm making in a not very summery fabric. This is 100% wool, <laughs> fingering weight yarn. It's in a navy blue color. This is the same yarn. Oh, there's like hair on it. Um, this is the same yarn I used for the Victoria scarf that I tested in March, I want to say, for Orson Knits. So it's that same navy blue, 100% wool. It's, it was vintage on a cone. Um, and it's 100% wool, but it's very dry. Um, like if I hold, I guess I don't have anything else 100% wool near, near me, but it's a very dry wool. It like feels almost kind of cottony. Um, so, and again, I live in a cooler climate, so I'm not really concerned about having a 100% wool t-shirt. I think it'll still be fine where I live um, for the summertime. So yeah, it has this really cool design feature on the back where you do this like horizontally knitted panel and then pick up stitches. And so this is like the back of the shirt will have this horizontal panel on it. And then you pick up stitches for the rest of the back and knit down. Um, and then you pick up for the front and knit down. And I'm working on the body right now. It's a drop shoulder, obviously. Um, and it has this cool collar detail that I've actually never seen anyone do before where I wish it would not show my face so you can see. There we go. So you pick up and knit just for a couple rows and then you do an eye cord bind off. So I think it's really interesting design feature. I'm hoping that it's kind of, it feels kind of loose right now, but I think after blocking, it'll be fine. Um, I did block this back piece after I, before I picked up for the front. So this fabric is blocked um, and this fabric is not. And you can feel a difference between the blocked and unblocked. This is a vintage wool that was on a cone. So there's a lot of spinning oil in here. And the more I, wa I washed it once, I pulled it off the cone and caked it up into this giant cake. All, like 250 grams were in this cake. Um, Cause I washed it when I brought it home from the thrift store just to make sure it didn't have any moth eggs or anything in it. Um, and then now you can really feel a difference between the fabric that's been washed once and that's been washed twice. Like the more I wash it, the softer it gets, which is lovely. I also think that this yarn is not going to pill very badly. Like it's, it's not rustic. I definitely wouldn't say that it's rustic. Um, but it's not also not like a super soft. I don't know. It's a good beginner. Like it would be a good entry level wool. Not that it matters because you can't buy it, but I really like it. So I'm a little less than halfway down the body. Um, yeah, I'm going to just keep going. And then the bottom, all the bind offs are I cords, which I do not love an applied I cord. I've done a lot of applied I cord knitting this year between my um, moonset pullover and my Lonely Leftovers vest. I've done a lot of applied eye cord and eye cord bind off, but this is a test knit, so I will do it as written. And I think I will like the finish when it's done. So yeah, that's my moon set tee. I'm test knitting the size two. I normally knit a size three for Ozetta patterns, but I wanted this to fit a little bit closer. I've just found that when I do knit the size three, which is what the size is recommended for my bust, it almost ends up being too much ease. So we'll see if, well, I've knit one of her patterns in the size three. I wouldn't knit actually one in the size large, which was way too much and I should have knit the size down. So I'm gonna try the size two and see what I think. And then maybe I'll land on what size in Ozetta patterns I prefer. But yeah, that's my moon. Nope, that's my air tee. I really like it. I'm very excited for to wear it. Um, I'm at the point though where I'm just knitting stockinette in the round, which if you know me, you know that's not my favorite activity. I don't find it very engaging or motivating but like i said i need to finish this test knit for the deadline which is in just under two weeks and so i'm not going to cast on anything else because i know that if i do i will want to work on that and not on this and i do want to have this finished product done so that i can wear it during the summertime and i do need to have the test knit done on time so i'm just going to keep knitting away on this and hopefully i'm going to try and do like two inches of body a day so today is june 4th which means i have 10 days to finish i have seven more inches of body to do and then two sleeves so
So I need to knit at least probably an inch and a half of body so that I can have that body done by the end of this week. And then I can do the two sleeves. They're not very long, so hopefully I can bash those out like one in a day. But basically I need to knit at least an inch to two inches on the body every day so until the deadline. So that's my primary focus for now. I'm just gonna keep bashing this out as fast as I can. I'm really enjoying, I liked the construction a lot. I thought it was really interesting. The short row placement in the back, you do like under that strip. So it's got a good fit. Um, and I think it will be really nice to have. I think I would honestly knit, an, uh, we'll see how the fit ends up, but I think I would probably knit another one in the future. Um, maybe at a slightly looser gauge, like I would modify the pattern to be at a, a slightly looser gauge. This is a 26 stitch gauge on 3.5 millimeter needles. So again, kind of small gauge on small needles, which is why it's taking me so long, but I am enjoying it a lot. And I think it's gonna be really cute when it's done. Um, so yes, that's what I'm focused on right now. I'm hoping to get it done as soon as I can. And then after that, I already have swatches, <laughs> which this doesn't look like much, but this is as good as a swatch as you get from me. Um, I've got swatches for my next two cast-ons. The first one, Ooh, the first swatch I have, which is hardly a swatch, but this is about as good as a swatch as I will ever do. I don't like swatching, but I understand that it's important because I've had one too many mistakes where not swatching kind of messed up a project for me. So I do these little baby swatches, <laughs> which I mostly focus on stitch gauge. As long as the pattern has measurements in it, it's fine. Um, so here's this teeny tiny little swatch. It's, I didn't even bind off the needles, but it is washed and blocked. Um, hello. Yes, here's this teeny tiny little swatch in. This is the Elsabeth Levold Silky Wool in the color uh, Unbleached, which I bought last end of summer last year at Acorn Street Shop here in Seattle at their summer end of summer sale. I love this color, I think it's beautiful, and I'm really uh, excited to work with this yarn. It is 45% wool, 35% silk, and 20% nylon. So a nice summer yarn, a nice Seattle summer yarn, I would say anything with wool is a good Seattle summer yarn. Um, and I'm going to be making the Tide Loops tea by Other Loops, which I've talked about like every video that I've posted in the past two months, because I really think it's beautiful. Um, I purchased the pattern, which is a big deal. I usually will swatch for, I will not buy the pattern until I'm like ready to cast it on. I'll even usually swatch for things before I bought the pattern, because on Ravelry, they usually list the gauge that you need. So I'll swatch with the yarn that I have before I buy the pattern. Um, but I've bought the pattern, I'm ready to cast on. As soon as I finish the Air Tea, I will be casting that on. Um, because I'm really excited to have it. It's if it's taking me like six weeks to six to eight weeks to knit a t-shirt, which it did for the Sunday tea. And I've honestly probably only been knitting on the air tee for like two weeks. Um, but so the only reason I'm gonna have finished it within four weeks is because I have to. Um, so knowing that that tie loops tee, which has a texture and is probably gonna take a little bit more time, uh, will probably take me six weeks. And if I finish it, if I start it mid June, then it'll be done like mid to late July. So I'll have August and September to wear it in the warmer weather, which is good. So I am going to cast that on very soon. I've been wanting to cast it on for months and I'm about to do it. So it's very exciting. And then the next thing I wanna cast on that I have a swatch for there's my little swatch. This is, I mean, compared to this, we're like 50% bigger. Um, this is my swatch for the shorts Lal or the Lal shorts, which is a design from Pasquale Designs, which is a yarn company, but they also have some really pretty patterns. And this is gonna be for like a pair of loose flowy summery shorts. Um, and this yarn is the Hobby Rainbow Bamboo. Uh, this yarn was sent to me for review purposes. Uh, which I will do a full review, a haul and review of the yarns that they sent to me in my next upcoming video in a couple weeks. But just a disclaimer that this yarn was sent to me for free for to try. Um, but it's a 60% bamboo viscose and 40% cotton yarn. Uh, the color is 39 and I really like it so far. I mean, I've just knit this little swatch. Um, 
but I love the drape on it. I really like this color and I'm really happy with how it washed and blocked as well. So yes, I'm gonna knit a pair of like flowy summery shorts with this. I also bought the pattern for these and I think I'm gonna make some modifications to it, but I will talk you through those at a later date. Um, basically the shorts are kind of like the legs of the shorts are kind of A-line and I want them to be more straight. So I'm gonna do some mishmashing of sizes and things to make them fit the way that I want. But I'm really excited to cast those on. I think they'll be really comfy and cozy for the summertime, like a lounge kind of short situation. So yeah, those are my plans. I've gone in so far as to swatch for them. I'm like ready to go. So I'm very excited to have my air tea finished and to start those other summer projects. And then I also have a swatch for like a more of a fall project that I can talk to you about later, but I'm not gonna cast that on probably at least until July or August. So I'll talk to you about it then, but just know that I am starting to think already about colder, like fall winter projects because I'm always thinking, I'm always planning about what I wanna knit next. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it for me today. Um, oh, by the way, what I'm wearing, this is the Amy Slipover, which is a pattern from Sandus Garn. I made it last fall with a fingering weight merino and drops kid silk. I really like it. I need to make some modifications to it. Um, this has like a double folded collar and I think I'm gonna sew it down, so I'll, like modify it a little bit. But I probably won't get around to do that until the fall because I'm already thinking about this. I hope you are too. I wanna to do another fall fix along, which is a knit along make along that I did last fall, pretty informally. Um, but I did host it, I think in October, where I like set the challenge of fixing things about knitting and sewing projects that I didn't love. Uh, and I think I would like to do that again this year and maybe run it from like September to November. So just keep that in mind. Maybe start finding things in your wardrobe that could use a little bit of love to make them perfect. Um, but yeah, just putting that on your radar for the fall fix along. So yes, um, other announcements. I'm going to Flock Fiber Festival in August, which I'm really excited about. My mom's coming up and we're gonna go together. We'll probably go on this Saturday. Um, and I know we're like a little ahead of schedule, but just so you know, if I see you there, please come say hi to me. That'd be very fun. Um, and other than that, I have some trips coming up, some trips to see family which will be good. I can see my new niece who was just born and take her her little shorts that I made her several months ago and it'll be great. So yeah, that's probably it for me. My knitting mojo has been not great, but I'm pushing on. Um, and I'm hopeful that the lovely summer weather will help me feel a little bit more happy and motivated and excited to keep knitting. I also wanna say thank you to everyone who left very kind comments on last month's video. Um, I really appreciate you being so kind and I love having you here. I really, it makes me feel very happy to know that I've got so many friends all over the world who love to talk about knitting with me. So again, thank you all so much for being here. It really means a lot to me. I uh, appreciate you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day or night or wherever you may be and whatever you may do be doing. I hope that you are well and I will talk to you again very soon.